Hello guys and welcome to a new Stellar Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. In this one I am going to share with you an overview of the three new allied divisions that are going to be added in the latest DLC, Blood Feud in Transylvania. And by the time this video comes out, the DLC will be out, so make sure to go check them out if you've bought it. Um, but basically, I wanted to do this video to show off all of the different divisions. Usually I do battle group previews, but I've already done them for all of these divisions months ago, over back in October. So what I'm going to do is go back over them um, briefly. And we're going to go through all of them really, really quickly and talk about what's cool about them, what it's good about them how they work and so on and i'll leave links in the description if you want to check out like a more in-depth look at each of the divisions some things have changed though so do bear that in mind as you can see we're going to be starting with the eighth cavalier potata and this is a very interesting infantry based division it has your classic kalarashi in numbers these are very strong recon squads 30 points get your sniper you do get a card of the 20 mil 222s as well which is nice you can actually bring them in phase b if you want 12 of them the other units in the recon tab not so great in the infantry tab this tab is actually pretty strong because of availability the kalarashi moto are double mg42 squads you can get 32 of them in phase c 24 in b and 12 in a this is huge so you can up bet these very easily and so that's what you can see I've done throughout the entire infantry tab here. They're all up vetted. So Pianelli Kalari up vetted. Uh, they are solid close range infantry squads. You've got Venetale de Garda. These are 12 strength fanatical squads. Um, the Kalarashi Moto, of course. And then I've got Rashari Assault even in phase B, which are really strong close range infantry uh, Molotov units. And then my phase C is basically just Rashari with veterancy and Kalarashi Moto without veterancy for the long run. So that is pretty much it for the infantry tab. Tank tabs are very simple. You can get Turans and, and the Zrini. These are both just worth up vetting, in my opinion. Uh, support tab. Zebbies, Bredas, and some supply from artillery. Other units in this tab are quite lackluster. Anti tank, Panzerschrecks, Pack 38s, Jag Panzers in Phase A. I've got Vunatore de Care and Reshitsa in B and C. Very, very strong AT guns. Great for cracking uh, Axis armor. These are going to be fantastic against things like uh, Panthers. So definitely worth taking the TACAM unfortunately falling a little bit short because it relies on the ZIS-3. The anti-air tab you do get Hotchkiss 25mm AA which is nice you also get Bofors very very cool and the Vickers AA so very useful AA these fire really like high velocity shells and the Bofors is just an overall great AA piece so pretty decent AA considering you don't get any cards in phase C other than the Hotchkiss trucks which aren't really reliable anyway artillery we have 60 mil mortars these are fantastic and are a staple of the Romanian divisions uh, very very well worth bringing in um, then we have the OB 100 mils which I'm going to be bringing in phase B with their own supply uh, as my sort of long range uh, mid-game artillery there used to be a card of strong German off map 220 mil but it has been taken out so you only have 105 mil off map now available which isn't really very good so I wouldn't really go for the off map here if anything I would go for these radio artillery pieces and the air tab is quite an interesting one lots of JU87s you can also get HS129s and JU88s with different payloads the JU87s seem worth bringing in in the early game if you could get an abundance of these and overrun your enemy early on uh, it could be well worth it so that i've basically got six bombers in phase a in case i want to do that and then j87s in the mid game in case i need to deal with armor after arting enemy aa and that's pretty much a lot for the eighth cavalier potata they're a solid infantry division but it is going to rely quite heavily on the Reshidza to take out enemy armor and the JU-87s. Their armor in themselves is very light, so do take care of it. Uh, but yeah, I would say this is going to be a relatively competitive 
1v1 division might suffer a bit in long team games however against heavier armored divisions. Moving on to the 9th Infanteria. This division actually has some glaring weaknesses but we'll get into that as we go along. Their recon tab actually starts off pretty strong. They do get plenty of 20 mil vehicles in the form of the 222s and the SPW 259s. Uh, you get plenty of Kalalashe which are those really solid recon infantry squads for 30 points. You've got a Panzerfaust, you've got plenty of the Kalabina and you've got the Sniper. So fantastic sort of mid-range engagement infantry squad plus loads of 20 mils. 20 mils are always fantastic for dealing with enemy infantry. The infantry tab themselves though really lacks quality. It's all infanterist. They've got uh, Pianeri and uh, Venatore Moto but very limited amounts of Venatore Moto and the Venatore Moto only have zb 30s anyway. I opted to bring in all of my Panzerfaust infantry in phase A to make best use of the infantry uh, experience curve so you can get six Infanterist and six Venatore Moto in phase A with one vet uh, so you only lose two if you up vet them. And then I've got the Infanterist Echi Passalt, which are actually a really good close range infantry squad. Uh, and then Infanterist and Venatore Moto in phase C. The tank tab is okay. You've got T4s, which do come with the heat shells on the Panzer IVs, so that's cool. And you get plenty of Stugs. I'm not quite going for the double vet on the Stugs, just to make sure that I have availability when it comes to like the mid to late game in this division in team games. Support tab, just MG34s. There's not really much else to bring. If you're playing a 1v1, you're probably going to want to bring the Flamers. Uh, but other than that, it's very lacklustre. Although, let's just take a good look at the Ford V8 sedan model because it's pretty cool. Then we have the anti-tank tab, which is the Vonatori de Cari. They've got the Pac-38 and the Takam in Phase A. I am bringing these. The Takam lacklustre, but... It's a thing that you can fit in this division, and for this one, I plan to just mess around with it. Uh, but yeah, Venatore de Care are really, really nice uh, infantry squads for close range engagements uh, against enemy infantry and also prefer providing the Panzerschreck, although I would recommend on prioritizing them for their Panzerschreck first. And then the Reshitsa are available, which are going to be your primary way of dealing with heavier armor. Anti-air is absolutely shocking in this division. You have the Hotchkiss card, the 20 mil card, and the 25 mil card. This, I feel, is going to make them very bad competitively in 1v1. And in team games, particularly like 3v3, 4v4 team games, they will get punished hard in a 10v10, maybe not so much. So that's probably where you're going to be seeing this division used more than anything else. And one way that you can certainly do things is by spamming 60 mil mortars. You get loads of 60 mil mortars in these Romanian divisions and they are really good. If you are a little slow on the micro, use defensive fire. They will automatically fire at everything in the circle of the defensive fire order. Uh, and they aim very fast and they fire lots of rounds very quickly. So they can catch out enemy units. Uh, just make sure you've got recoil on the front line to see them. You've got plenty of good recon, so no excuse not to. You've also got recon in the air tab, so that's what you're going to be wanting to do with all of these 60 mil mortars. There are other options. You can bring in plenty of the radio 75 mils and the radio 100 mils. There's even off map options, but the 100 mil off map not that great. So that's where I've left it here. I've also brought in the artillery leader in phase B. Uh, so that we have extra leaders for our infantry moving forwards. Then in the air tab, I'm making up for the lack of anti-air with fighters. So I have the IAR, including the ACE in phase A, Visanti, and we have the IARs in phase B. So nine fighters in this division, plus IAR 81 mil, or eight, not sorry, 81 M's in phase C, which have the 227 kilogram bomb and two 50 kilogram bombs, just sort of bombers for the late game. The availability on these is really trash, but it's something's better than nothing. And it kind of doubles up as a fighter if you need that little bit extra in the late game. Uh, you can obviously opt for the HE-111 if you prefer. Uh, that is certainly a viable choice. But the IARs, I would definitely recommend bringing. In the early game, you can really exploit the 60mm mortars with the IARs uh, just by them providing recon information. They don't come with bombs, though, like some of the other IARs that uh, 
you can get with the Romanians, so do bear that in mind. But yeah, overall, it's a interesting division. I would say one of the more weaker divisions of this DLC because of its lack of infantry quality and the terrible AA, uh, which kind of leaves it vulnerable in that 1v1 and team game scenarios that I mentioned before. 10v10s, this game, this will be fun to play and uh, you'll certainly be able to get some decent kills on heavy armor with the Reshitsa. You'll have some fantastic recon play and the 60mm mortar memes will be fun to do as well. So that's where the 9th Infanterie is. Corporal 6 Territorial. This is one of the stronger allied divisions in this DLC. It is quite a well-rounded deck. It mixes Soviet and Romanian units. Uh, so let's start off in the recon tab. You can see that we get plenty of the Kalareshi and I'm also accompanying it with a T70. T70s can actually push above their weight in close range combat. So that's what I would be using them for. You can get Dosor, which can come in the BA-64s. You can get Motoraz Vedka. Unfortunately, they come in, can't, can't come in their 50 cal uh, vehicle, though. And that's about it, really, for the recon tab. Infantry tab, you do get access to the Kalarashi Moto and their insane numbers of double MG-42 infantry. So I've got them upvetted in Phase A. I've got them unvetted in Phase B because you can't bring them in Phase C. So I'm utilizing the maximum availability in Phase B there. Uh, Morty, really, really interesting close range infantry squads, uh, which do have long range capability with the double MG-34, whilst also having the explosives for close range. I've got nine of those in phase A, and I've got 27 of them in phase C. Uh, we've got Pioneer Assault available. These are the really strong eight man submachine gun squads with uh, two Flammenwerfer, so 10 man overall. Really, really solid squads. The other options in this tab though, are relatively lackluster. You've got lots of uh, Rekrutzi in here, the, the, the Reservist. These are obviously disheartened infantry that are kind of bad. There's the uh, Infanterist with Panzerfaust, which aren't terrible. Uh, but when you look at like the Granatieri, mm, not so great. Uh, you've got some of the bad Soviet infantry, like just normal Strauki, Avtos, not so great. Strauki DP might be worth fitting in, uh, but I'm opting to go for the Granatieri Calari in this case with the uh, three ZB-30s for pinning stuff down at range, but this could be a good option for phase C, I suppose, uh, since the Soviet units do generally come in from phase B onwards in this deck, that is something to bear in mind. In the tank tab, that's exactly the case. The T-34s come in from phase B onwards, and you can get quite a lot of T-34, 85, 1944s. So I'm bringing six in phase B, two up vetted, so that I can get a little bit of a head start immediately with those. And then in phase C, I'm just opting for one vet, so I can push these to three vet potentially with leader and commander to get value out of them in the late game. But that's 20 T-34, 85s over... 2000 well it's 2200 points basically worth of tanks there uh, support tab is pretty lackluster unfortunately uh, only machine guns really available one card of brother and uh, military police for if you go down the disheartened infantry route uh, but yeah hotchkiss zb schwaloza i'm choosing the zb 53 not going to be upvetting them because it kind of sacrifices a bit of availability and the ZB doesn't really benefit much from veterancy. Uh, then I've got two cards of the supply for my artillery that we'll get to. There's quite a lot of artillery in this division and then the Commandant. I've got in the anti-tank tab just for Notorio de Care in the pack 38. 80 is pretty light in the early game so I might opt to move the Reshitsa to phase A to kind of cover until we get the T-34-85s in. But more of a Notorio de Care in phase B never hurt anyone. So again, solid infantry for close range engagements whilst also using their panzer track for taking out vehicles which I would prioritize with the use of these divisions. In the anti-air tab, actually pretty interesting, we get the Hotchkiss Dubler. This thing is incredible. It's really, really strong. It's a dual 25mm AA, so it rips aircraft out of the sky. In phase B, I'm opting to bring in more 20 mils. These are upvetted though. Getting these to 3 vet is quite important for them to be effective. And then I've got 88s in B and 88s in C. The other thing I forgot to mention in the anti-tank tab, you can also get some Soviet uh, uh, AT, but they can only come in phase B and C. In the artillery tab, there is a lot here, a lot that you might want to look at. 
there's some cool 105 mil artillery 100 mil artillery you get 150 mil artillery the big boys you get four of these uh, but i've got the big chonkers the 155 mil artillery in phase so you get eight of them and they have radio pretty cool in phase b i'm opting for the 105s with supply because they're relatively cheap and then 60 mils in a and b which is going to be supplied by the uh, phase b and c supply vehicles then in the air tab things are very cool again we get some new aircraft the portes uh, not the best bombers in the world but they're cool and they're new so i am going to be using the ones with the two 200 kilogram bombs in phase a in phase b this is when you get access to the russian fighters you can actually opt to go for the yak 1b's with two vet in b or c uh, but there is also yak 9t's and i think yak 9t's are overall more reliable at killing things uh, you can also get bf109 g2's in phase a but g2's are kind of trash and the il2 unfortunately doesn't come till phase b potes does come in phase a the recon variant so you could use that for recon if you needed to but the trouble is all of these units like the Yak 9B here and the IR2, they're all phase B and phase C, which makes them much less effective overall. And that's pretty much a lot for Corporal 6 of Territorial. A very solid all-rounder division, which works pretty well on the balanced deployment type. You could possibly push this for Juggernaut and get multiple T-34s in phase C, like do a three cards of T-34s in phase C. Uh, you could do like massive artillery tabs uh, there's plenty of infantry to go around like this could be a serious juggernaut for uh 3v3 14 games or 10v10s so that's something to look out for in 1v1 it could also be competitive i think this could be relatively strong as long as you don't get run down by uh, numerous light armored vehicles in the early game i think you could struggle with that but you can always tailor your at tab to deal with that like because you can get the like a number of pan strikes you got loads of the schneider 47 mils if you want them so there are ways to deal with that in the early game the corporal six territorial definitely one of the more promising units in the new dlc now you may have noticed overall over the last three divisions i have set them all up as balanced i think for team games which is what i play the most that is the most viable solution for these decks if you want to go for 1v1 i would recommend the eighth or corporal six territorial and both of them can probably be used as maverick deployment types i don't think either would really suit vanguard but that is my brief summary of the three new romanian allied divisions really cool that we get Romanian divisions on the Allied side now, one of them having some Soviet units to spice things up. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video, I will be doing another one of these for the Axis side. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.